The ability of Jump software to easily create decision trees makes it a fantastic tool for troubleshooting. In this video, I'm going to share with you three tips to increase their effectiveness. Here is my Jump table. It contains data for a pharmaceutical tablet manufacturing process. The process has multiple steps, milling, blending, compression, spraying. Each of these steps contains multiple process parameters. In addition, I have information about raw materials. Dissolution is my response of interest. Here is a control chart. What you see is that this process is going out of control and I want to investigate the cause of this using a decision tree. To create the decision tree, I can come to the partition platform and I could put dissolution as the response and everything else as the X's. Now, what questions does this ask? It asks for this list of X's, which ones are having the biggest influence on dissolution and it'll help me understand how the X's influence dissolution. Now that's a reasonable question to ask, but it doesn't get to the real heart of the problem. What I really want to do is understand what is causing these very low points that I see here. So I'm selecting these points and I've got 11 of them. So tip number one, I want to convert my continuous response dissolution into a binary response, a response that has two values such as good and bad. The way I do it is I first of all make this selection. So let me just do that again. I'm selecting the points of interest. This is my failure mode condition that I'm investigating. And now I can come to the rows menu and for this selection, I can give them a name. And the selected values are poor and the unselected ones are the normal condition. Now I have this additional column in my data table with just two values and that is going to be my response for the decision tree. Now I can go ahead and actually create the decision tree. Tip number two, I have two outcomes, red and blue, and I can see the outcomes if I hover over them, but I, would, I don't want to keep on trying to remember which is which. So what I'd like to do is put labels onto this decision tree, such that when I split, I know what the red and blues are and I also know what the relative proportions are. So to do that, I display this or turn on this option, show split probability. So it does two things. It shows the, the actual proportions here or the probabilities if you like, but it also gives me the labels for the colors. So this is a much more visual representation of the information now. So we can see that on average 12.5% was poor, but when we have a meal time less than 14, we go up to 30%. And if I do another split, if we have a meal time less than 14 and a screen size of five, we're close to 60%. So it looks like I have a condition here. Now out of interest, both of those the mill time and the screen size are associated with the milling step of the process. So I'm learning a lot from this, and this is a much more visual way of conveying the information. This is so useful, in fact, I would suggest you turn this on as a default preference, and in version 17, that's very easy to do. I can just save my changes and save this as a preference. You might also want to consider turning off the graph, I don't really think that adds a lot of value, but it does take up a lot of screen space. There's one final problem with this, and that is a condition known as cognitive dissonance, where what you are seeing doesn't agree with the way your brain works, if you like. So we see the poor as blue and the normal as red, but I think our minds tend to associate with red with bad. So I'd like the poor to be red and the normal to be green. 
and the way I fix that is to set up a column property so let me come back to my uh, data table and if I come to my status column I can attach a property to it which is the value colors property and I want the normal then to be green I want the poor to be red now when I come to my decision tree where well, nothing's changed but the next time I create a decision tree it will inherit those colors the quickest way I can do that is just to do a redo so now you see my decision tree has the colors and I quickly see that the red condition here this is the poor condition this is the problematic area it's the failure mode and I can very quickly use this decision tree to drill down and isolate potential conditions that are contributing to that failure mode I hope you found this video useful if you did please click the like button below and think about subscribing so that you can easily find future videos thanks for watching and bye for now